Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the JF-17 and we're looking at TACAN, Tactical Air Navigation. This is something that militaries use to get to TACAN stations, wherever a TACAN station is. TACAN stations can be on airfields, they can be on aircraft carriers, they can be in other aircraft like air-to-air -air refuelers, or just at points of interest. First thing we need to do is go and find a valid TACAN station to navigate to. So we're on the Caucasus map and we've chosen this. That there is a universal sign for a TACAN station. To get more information, click on it there. You can see that the TACAN is 67 X-ray and it's more to identify is KBL. The identifier there is to ensure that we have tuned in to the correct station. This is a radio-based system. Now, a TACAN, like, for instance, direction finding, can get you to a place, to get you to head to the right place, but it can do more than that. It can get you on a certain course, so it can allow us to attack or get to this point in a certain direction. And that would be useful, for instance, if we wanted to attack this TACAN station on a runway radial. So if we wanted to ensure that we got to this station here on the radial, as we call it, of the runway. So let's go measure the radial of the runway. If we drag a point there, we put it to there. The radial of that runway, if we see it at the, at the top there, is 069. Bear in mind that is true and not magnetic, if you don't understand the difference between magnetic and true. We have a video in the DCS explained section. So to reiterate, we are going to fly from here, not to the Takan station, but we're going to actually ask the Takan to navigate us to about there, so that we intersect a radial course of that 069 going that way and then take us towards the runway. We're not going in for a proper approach or landing. We're just explaining the concept of TACAN to navigate to that station on a radial. So we're going to head over to the left, MFCD, back to main menu, over to TACAN. We want to set up our channel, which was 067, if you remember. Our band is already X-ray. What this is going to do when we go to mode is to tune in to the station. There are several modes. Receive is going to allow us to talk to a ground station because it's receiving only and not transmitting. It will only give us azimuth information, not range. Edge ground allows us to transmit and will give us range and azimuth information. Air to air receive will give us azimuth only to an airborne TACAN station. Air to air B will give us range and azimuth and possibly altitude. We haven't tried that out yet for an airborne TACAN station. So we're going to go air to ground so that we have azimuth and the range information. Now, can you hear that beeping in the background? That's Morse code coming through our radio and we can turn that up if we want here. And that, if you translated that on Google or whatever, will give us our Morse code identifier. If you remember that, that was, I think it was KBL. That's just to check we are configured to the right channel. Three things we've missed out, course, altitude, and variation course we need to put in. So we need to tell the TACAN system the radial we want to approach on. Course 069. Uh, variation, I'm going to pause again. And this is very important. We need to tell this aircraft here what the magnetic variation is of the exact part of the world that we're in. Our 069 is a true heading or a true course, remember. Currently, we've got a variation from true of 13 degrees where, uh, w, I think that's west. Uh, so we need to set it to naught so that it will equal a true course. So we're going to head through that now. Uh, we're just going to put a zero, zero. That's all that's set up. The only thing we haven't covered now is the altitude. Obviously, that's not going to be relevant in this case because we're not going to go and land. We think the altitude is mainly going to be used for uh, air to air tankers. So, if there's an air to air tanker up at 25,000 feet, it's going to help us navigate to that. So, to actually use the guidance information from TACAM, we're going to be using the HARD symbology and we're going to be using the HSD symbology. So, HSD up here. We're going to first turn TACAM on, then we're going to pause it and have a quick talk about what we're looking at. Unpause. TACAM. Okay, and I'm going to zoom out. <clears throat> I'm going to zoom out again, maybe. It's telling us that the distance to the Takan station is 23.9 nautical miles. The bearing is 0 0.91, and the true course is 0 0.69. So the true course, remember, is what we've asked to get on. The bearing is the difference from what I'm traveling here to where it is. So if I turned uh, 0 0.91 degrees, that is where it would be. In fact, I think I could see it over there somewhere. This here is our Takan station. That is where it is in comparison to us. You can see 0 uh, 091 from us here. This here, imp very importantly, is the course line we've set of true 069 degrees so what we want to do is intersect with that turn onto that 
and then head down that course line to that. You can see we've overshot, that's because I'm talking a lot and that's what happens. We'll also be using this directional carrot up here on the outer rows and we will show that as well. And finally on the HUD, um, now we've got lots of merged information here. This what I call the tadpole, that circle, that line and that cross there is INS information, waypoint information that's nothing to do with TACAN. The TACAN, what we've got is here, two circles, uh, a bit like the Hornet, and a guide arrow there. The guide arrow there, first of all, wants to point forwards. That means we're going towards the TACAN station. If we're pointed backwards, we'll be going away from the TACAN station. And it's going to guide us onto course and to the TACAN station. And what we want to do is have this guy in the middle. It's in the middle, we're on course heading towards the Takan station. Now, because we're so far away off course, because I've been chatting so long, I'm going to head back out to sea. So we're roughly heading in this direction here, and then we'll use the Takan information to get onto this course radial. Okay, I've flown back out to sea. It's going to be fairly tight. I would usually uh, give more time for this, but you can see that's where I am there. This is the radial that we've set up, the 069 True. That's the Takan station there. I'm going to use a mixture of our guide here on the hard and our HSD here now to get onto that radial. So I'm going to turn in now. Okay. It's not looking too bad. And what I should say is, you see the carrot at the top of the rows there, that is our heading towards, that means that we're heading towards the uh, the Takan station. So that guy should be at the 12 o'clock position once we are on our course. <laughs> Slightly off the left now. We're just going to punch in right a little here. Should start to see the runway. There's the runway. Slightly off to the right there. You can see I'm off course. And that's my fault. So I'm punching over to the right, trying to intercept that radial again. Distance 14.2 miles. Just uh, intercepted this to have a quick look. Um, interestingly, uh, the bearing is 348. And what that's actually meaning, if we imagine that is zero uh, in terms of relative to my aircraft, that's 90, that's 270. So it's telling me that uh, the, the, the heading to get there, if you like, is over there, which is 348, which is why it looks a bit weird because it's relative to my aircraft. It's just something it takes a bit of getting used to. Right, must get back on the um, course. I have a nasty habit of uh, flying off course. Nearly there. Okay, I'm just about merging with my radial, with my course line now. And what we should see is the arrow uh, in the HUD start to centre between those two guide uh, circles or dots. And then I just need to hold that, and that should be me golden. We'll see. Okay, I've got to turn now. Shot every, over it ever so slightly, but it was a huge amount. I can see this visually now. I see the runway. I'm still slightly off. Remember that the Takan station is not perfectly in line with the runway. That is the Takan station there. It's actually going to take me about there. So I'm actually slightly right of it at the moment. As you get closer, it'll be harder to. Yeah, it gets more and more uncontrolled. It gets more. Keep it centered. Violent, yeah. I think we'll terminate there. So we've got to 3.4 miles from the airfield. We're very close to being on the right course line. I never really got the course line perfect there. I was always slightly off to the left or off to the right, but you know, it's practice. And plus, remember, there's always a little bit of error here. Whenever you're working with bearings and headings, there's always a little bit of cumulative error in terms of rounding up and whatnot. But basically, that there got me to the runway until I could see the runway lights or my, uh, you know, my ILS can take over, which is designed to take more accurate, take me down to the runway. Airborne Takan stations. In fact, there's one thing I forgot to show. My apologies. We can have multiple Takan stations set up with Takan 1 at the moment. We can go to Prog 2. So we can have plenty of them set up and we can switch between them.